G'day there guys, the voice in the back of your head here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. It's your host Marky, I hope you enjoy the show, sit back, relax and tell me all about it. Thank you, smash like button, come on. Posted by user, the name of the baby. Titled, am I the a-hole for shutting down black names because I think it'll make life harder on my kids. So my husband and I are having a baby. I'm mixed race, half black and half white, my husband is black. We don't know the gender yet, but my husband prefers names that most people would call black names for boys. Names like Trayvon, Devonte, Marquise, etc. I grew up with a name that is tied to black culture and hated it for most of my life. I go by a shortened form of my name professionally, i.e. D for Denasia, because I've seen how people react to my government name. I am sure I have been passed up for jobs because of how people perceive my name. My husband has a name more commonly used for white boys, i.e. Jake. He wants a strong black name for our son because he never had that, and believes that giving him a white name to avoid racism isn't helping anyone. I don't disagree, but don't want to use our son as a test dummy to change that. This has become a battle. I know that we both need to agree on a baby name, but am I the a-hole for writing off all black names? This is a tough one because there's going to be a lot of different opinions on this matter, and I don't think that people that disagree with you here are particularly wrong, and neither are people that agree with you. I'm personally on the side of not the a-hole because that's what you're putting into this relationship, but your husband also is putting his side of the relationship, where he wants a strong black name for your son. If you two are communicating properly, and you completely shut him down and ignore his wants and needs for this child, then you would be an a-hole in that situation. But as it stands currently, I'm gonna go with not the a-hole. No a-holes here. You both have perfectly valid points. Why not give him one as a first name and one as a middle name? That way they'll both be his legal names and he can make his own choice when he's old enough to understand. I think this is fair. I am white, but have always gone by my middle name. Most people just assume it's my first name and, other than one caddy teacher who only used our official first name, I never had any issues personally or professionally using my middle name. While I completely understand OP's view, having a white name doesn't completely get rid of the weird reactions. My kids are biracial slash black and have white first names. So white that both names make the Freakonomics top 20 whitest names list. My son said that people sometimes do double takes and he hopes that if he dates a white girl in college that she'll tell her parents beforehand he's black to avoid an awkward meeting of the parents. If they only hear his name, then they'll most likely assume he's white. That didn't stop him from being pulled over and made to empty his backpack for biking in our neighborhood. I see the husband's argument too. Telling black people that they have to be more white isn't fair. Speaking of Freakonomics, the resume experiment did show that black sounding names got less callbacks than white sounding names. But if someone is going to throw out Deshaun's resume, I don't know if they would hire a black David that comes through the doors for an interview either. And if someone doesn't want to hire Deshaun, then that's probably not the ideal work environment for a person of colour anyway. Giving both options allows the kids to decide. Both of my kids like their names, but I do wish we gave them this option. No a-holes here. Both have valid points. Maybe suggest a name that has a strong association with proud, powerful, and inspirational black figures, but that isn't, for lack of a better term, definitionally black. Like maybe Nelson, or Martin, or Malcolm, or Desmond, or some such. And OP says, I love Malcolm and Desmond, thanks. Not the a-hole. I saw a comedian once whose name was Tyrone, and he said his name was Gaelic, and it meant, we're not hiring. Updates. I posted a month ago about a dilemma that my husband and I were having with our baby's name. We had already decided on a girl's name because it honours his mother, but we are stuck on a boy's name. 
My husband thought it was important for our son to have a name strongly tied to Black American culture. I wanted a more neutral name since I am biracial and grew up with a stereotypical Black name. We found out we're having a boy and decided on his name. His name will be Miles Trayvon. We thought it was a perfect compromise. My husband's family tends to use middle names a lot, so he'll probably just be Trey to most of them. When he's in school, his name will just be listed as Miles, last name. He can officially be Miles T, last name, if he doesn't want to use Trayvon, but he can also easily go by Trayvon if he feels more connected to that name. This option gives him the choice, which my husband and I agreed was important. My husband hated growing up with a stereotypical white boy name and said it caused some ribbing from people in his community who saw him as being less black. He talked about how in 8 Mile, Eminem's character said something like, this guy's a gangster, his real name is Clarence. That's not to say my husband ever wanted to be a gangster, he's an actuary lol, but he said he felt like his name played a role in further isolating him from his black peers growing up. I had the opposite experience. My mum is white and my dad is black. They decided on a stereotypical black name and I think it made my life harder. Professionally, I go by a nickname, and I do personally as well. When talking about it with my husband, I realised it started early. I remember being about four and being out with my white grandma. A woman came up to me, touched my hair, told my grandma I was beautiful, and then asked what my name was. Instead of saying my real name, my grandma said, her name is Daisy. I attended an HBCU and finally felt comfortable with my given name, but noticed a lot of seniors with black names used shortened versions of their names for job applications. For example, Raekwon Smith would be put Ray Smith, Demarcus Jones would put Marcus Jones, Kashonda Nelson would put Shauna Nelson, etc. They said you had to play within the system, and I did that. Anyway, sorry for the long update. I just wanted to explain why this was such a big deal to both of us. We didn't really get deep into it until after I posted here, so thanks for encouraging that dialogue. Before anyone says it, I do realise that some people will connect Trayvon to Trayvon Martin. That's not why we're using it. I posted about this in Name Nerds, and a lot of people were upset by it, but I don't mean to offend anyone. It's a family name on my husband's side. Posted by user, over this wedding crap. Titled, Would I be the a-hole if I cancelled our wedding? Throw away, a bit long-winded, but here we go. I recently got engaged to the man of my dreams in April 2019, set to be married in September of 2020. Even before we got engaged, my fiancé and I agreed that we were going to keep it on the smaller side and only invite our closer friends and family. Now, I have four other siblings that I'm not close to. I only talk to one, and that's putting it lightly. I've chosen not to invite the remaining three, and only invite the one I speak to. My mother wasn't particularly pleased, but understood at the time. We already went through bullcrap with his side of the family, due to the fact that I didn't want to invite everyone from his side of the family, which would be an additional 60 plus people to our list. My fiancé and I had already had a list of everyone he wanted to invite on his side of the family, and mine. It was a huge thing where we eventually compromised on inviting a large portion, but not all. They essentially threatened to not help pay for the wedding, so I felt a bit bullied into giving in. Flash forward to the past few weeks. My mother has had a falling out with the one sibling I speak to, and now wants me to invite one of the ones who I have literally no relationship with. I've told her no many times, and to be civil and please respect my wishes. Today, she threw the fact that we were inviting my fiancé's family to the wedding, though it was a different scenario in my opinion, and said she isn't coming to the wedding unless I invite him. At this point, I'm over all of it. I haven't been able to enjoy being engaged because it's been family drama, and I'm not even looking forward to planning the wedding. We have planned a large portion and most of everything has been paid for out of our pockets. 
I suggested we just cancel the damn thing and elope to my fiancé, and he agreed. Would I be the a-hole to cancel it and just elope? I think the wedding is a bit too much stress for you, and if you both agree on cancelling and eloping, who can blame you for that decision? Yeah, it upsets other people, but it's not their wedding. At the end of the day, it's about what works best for you two as a couple, and if the family environment is so toxic to the point where it's better to cancel the wedding for you two mentally than to go with it, I can't blame you for that. You sound like you're in a rock and a hard place with the rest of your family members here. And I wouldn't want to be in that same place as you. So I would probably do the same thing if I were you. Not the a-hole. You would not be the a-hole. Edit. Thank you to everyone for the resounding support during this difficult time. We both greatly appreciate it. I've read through every comment, and most have been so kind. Even the not-so-kind ones have helped shed light on a different perspective. I will keep you all updated in the next few days and weeks with a decision. Thanks again. Not the a-hole. If you and your fiancé are on the same page, then that's all that matters. From the sound of it, you wouldn't even enjoy this wedding you planned. This. I'm currently planning a wedding, and this issue has come up. Don't let them hold you hostage. If their monetary contribution is contingent on you doing things their way, it is no longer your day. Input is appreciated, but if it doesn't add joy to your day, you have to put your foot down. Either way, congrats on the future nuptials. Not the a-hole. I suggested we just cancel the damn thing and elope to my fiancé, and he agreed. The only two opinions that matter. Plus the fact they paid for everything. If other people's money gets involved, then it gets complicated. No, it doesn't. It's their wedding. If they decide to just elope, nobody else gets a say. Yes, it does. This has nothing to do with them deciding to elope. They paid for the wedding, assuming it was happening. If the wedding gets cancelled based on the couple's decision, the couple should reimburse them. There was an agreement, and now the funders are altering the deal. So let the bride and groom alter it again. You can have your wedding, it's just that we won't be there. First of all, we don't even know who funded it or what the agreement was. Second off, they agreed to everything along the way so far. Anybody who put money toward this would be betrayed by the elopement. And OP replies, As of this moment, my fiancé and I are the only ones who have paid for anything. Both sides of the family have agreed to help, but have not given us money at this time. If this is true, then literally do whatever the F you want. Not the a-hole, elope and avoid the drama. Best wishes to you both. In my experience, eloping does not avoid drama if you don't plan on cutting ties. My sister-in-law eloped and everyone is still salty about it, I think. That said, might be worth the damaged relationships anyway. Really? People are holding grudges about that? Do people actually like weddings enough that they're mad when someone doesn't have one? That's crazy. If I had eloped, there would have been a ton of drama. A lot of people will actually get salty. That is just crazy to me. I just can't imagine being excited enough by someone else's wedding that I would be mad that they didn't have one. I didn't know that anyone liked weddings that much. Updates Hello all, it's been some time since I laid out all the bullcrap my fiancé and I were dealing with in regards to planning our wedding and such. We were so overwhelmed with the immense response and support, so thank you to everyone who contributed and offered advice. Now on to what happened. My fiancé and I talked it through, the pros and cons etc. We both realized how unhappy we were with how things were going and decided that we were going to cancel the wedding and move forward with eloping. We decided that we didn't want it to be just us, but a small group of family and friends as well. We were both ecstatic, but also extremely worried at how our parents were going to take it, especially considering our guest list went from over 120 people to 20 but we were both committed, and he decided to tell his parents, and I would then tell mine. Surprisingly, his parents were so supportive and extremely ecstatic that we were getting eloped. 
they were even more excited when we let them know we wanted them there, and they booked their flights soon after. They also handled telling their families and friends in Texas that we were eloping and to get over it. So that saved us the trouble. His other family was very supportive and wished us the best. My father was also incredibly supportive and couldn't wait to be there. My mother, on the other hand, was furious. The phone call to her started off calmly enough, and I did let her know before beginning the conversation that she most likely wouldn't enjoy this. But I pressed forward. I told her our reasons, our stresses, how we felt disrespected and disregarding concerning everything, I laid it out all in a calm and collected manner. Once finished, she was very quiet and simply said, All right. I knew immediately that I was pretty well screwed, but we ended the phone call with her stating she understood. Less than 24 hours later, she texts me asking if my brother, whom one of our biggest stresses was about, was invited. I was ticked because I had just had this conversation with her and explicitly told her who was invited and etc. I responded back with a simple no and that my father, grandmother and herself were invited. Well, crap hit the fan. She sent me a wall of texts, calling me all sorts of names, throwing my fiancé's family in my face and how we took their side. How I never truly gave a crap about her feelings, all the good stuff. I remained calm, and before sending each response, consulted my fiancé as to not sound like a total tramp. Long story short, she said unless my brother is invited, she won't be coming. So, I told her not to come. I was over it and stopped responding to her texts. For days, she texted me, saying all the same as before, and kept asking if my brother was invited. I responded once and told her that until she apologised, she won't, that I wouldn't be seeing or speaking to her about anything regarding the wedding. I offered an open seat to our wedding. Whether she shows or not is completely up to her. My fiancé and I have already booked a small venue for our elopement and are more excited planning this than our previous wedding and are looking forward to our future. Edits since everyone here has become a dictionary for the word elopement, take it however you like. Small wedding slash elopement, I don't care. I'm marrying the love of my life in the way that I want to, so I won either way. Stark Hand says, Have a plan for when she shows up with your brother, because she's going to. My fiancé and I are very worried about this, honestly. Luckily, he lives in Russia for a better part of the year, and just left recently to go back. My mum knows what it would mean if she brought him. She also has terrible sense of direction and needs my dad to get her to the venue. So, she does have a babysitter of sorts. I understand that you don't have a relationship with your brother, but do you find him generally reasonable? If so, it might be worth reaching out to him and your other siblings who aren't invited and just explaining your reasoning for not inviting them. If you think they'll understand, it should mean that if your mother tries to pull a Swifty, she won't have anyone to go along with. I have not spoken to my sister and one of my older brothers in many, many years. One of them is an alcoholic and a drug addict who is definitely not invited. Though my mum first wanted him to come, and the other one is just a total a-hole, if I'm being honest. Especially to my mum. One of the many reasons I stopped speaking to my siblings in the first place was because of how they spoke and treated my mother in particular. Honestly, this relationship she has with this sibling currently will end and then start again in another vicious cycle. It has unfortunately been like that for years. Damn, sounds like my idea wouldn't work. I'm sorry you're in such a difficult situation and that it's of your mother's creation. It bothered me for a long time because everyone tells you that family is everything. Always choose them over anyone else, blah, blah. But literally all of my siblings treated me like absolute crap growing up and I can't even begin to tell you what they did or have said to my mum. It's horrific. I decided I didn't want those types of people in my life, family or not. Peace. Good on you.
As the saying goes, don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. You were doing the right thing prioritizing your own happiness over theirs. After all, the wedding is about you. Cheers. Congratulations on your marriage. I'm curious, particularly since I know barely anything about American weddings, is it actually a thing to elope with a party of 20 guests? That just sounds like a lot of people to me. At what point is it not eloping anymore and a destination wedding with only close friends and family instead? I have a feeling that the two are the same thing, and this just comes down to semantics. Anyway, I hope you have a great stress-free time. OP says, It's weird, because a lot of venues offer elopement packages. This one offered an elopement ceremony. I could invite up to 40 if I wanted. But I get the venue for two hours. We say our vows, smack lips, and peace out. Feels elopish? I don't know. All I know is that I'm getting married. Why are you inviting your mother if she is a crap disturber and emotional abuser and calling you names? How do you know she won't just bring your bro? If she can't get on your level, she should be banned too. Despite how she has acted during my engagement, her and I have a phenomenal relationship. She just acts incredibly childish whenever anything doesn't go her way. Whenever she would pull that crap when I was younger, I called her out on it and told her to grow up and moved on. I want her at my wedding, and even though some of Reddit think she's a crazy tramp, she isn't. I'm the only child to be there for her when crap hits the fan, and I did tell her over a text that if she did decide to bring my brother, our relationship would be over. So if she wants to risk that, then fine. Alright, that's where I think I'm going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I really do hope you learned something or just really enjoyed the posts that were put up today. Quick shout out to all my new and existing Patreon and channel members. You should be able to see your name on screen right now. And if you don't, then I don't think you're part of the club. And you really should join the club because it's a great club. And I want to thank every single one of you guys for supporting me in this journey. It really means so much to me and I love you all so much for it. Thank you for helping me out. As you can tell, I'm now happy and healthy back in Australia. Thank God it's not cold like Ireland. <laughs> I don't like wearing jumpers everywhere. I prefer the heat. Thank you very much. I know that's an unpopular opinion. Anyway, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you later. Bye.